Welcome to our lecture online and continuing with our exploration, exploration in particle physics. Let's go back in history and find out how people slowly discovered how matter was made. Remember, we were in a period where people thought that atoms were the most simple structure in the universe and everything was made up of indivisible little things called atoms and compounds were simply made out of grouping of atoms. Atoms were not able to be destroyed, divided, or created. Of course, we know now that is not the case. Some very interesting experiments were done to break that concept down. One of them was done by Ernest Rutherford. He devised a method where he would shoot alpha particles at a very thin gold leaf. So here we had a gold leaf that was extremely thin, and alpha particles are basically the nucleus of helium atoms. And alpha particles have two protons and two neutrons, and so we'd shoot those at a very thin leaf of gold, and the vast majority of them would go right through the other side unaffected. But once in a while, one of them would actually be curved, so after it passed through the gold leaf, it would be traveling in a different direction. That was very odd. And once in a great while, which was to his astonishment, one of the alpha particles would come straight back. And he just couldn't understand how that could happen. The concept of matter, it was kind of like that matter was kind of like a pudding. And if you put particles through that, it should get mired in the pudding or should get slow down or something like that. The fact that the alpha particles went through the gold leaf unaffected with the, pretty well the same speed on the other side as they went in was just simply not explainable. The fact that they also curved once in a while was not explainable and especially when one of them would shoot right back almost like it was ricocheted off something and came back. And Rutherford was so surprised by that that he kind of likened it to the idea that, that you would shoot a cannonball at a piece of paper and the cannonball would ricochet back to you and the piece of paper would simply push it back. Unexplainable, not to be expected. But when they began to think about matter and the result of the experiment, they began to realize that matter was probably made up of something very small and positively charged at the center and then a very large area around it that had no effect on the alpha particles. And so only if an alpha particle came close to the what we would call the nucleus of an atom, it would be repelled by the positive charge of the nucleus and therefore go one direction or go the other direction like this. And in the case of a head-on collision, it would simply come straight back. That was the concept. And so they thought that this nucleus of an atom had to be extremely small because the vast majority of particles were unaffected, didn't get close enough to the nucleus to be affected, and would not be ricocheted back. So the vast majority of the atom would be space through which the alpha particles could simply travel through, and every once in a while there would be some effect by the nucleus of the, of the atom. Also realizing that atoms were neutral in charge, there had to be some negative charges, some negative particles there as well, and they had to be somewhere around the nucleus. So there was this concept that there was a separation of particles in an atom. Atoms were no longer a single undivided particle. Atom had to, be a, had to have a certain structure to it. So Rutherford did get the Nobel Prize in 1908. It was a prize in chemistry for his discoveries. Then came along Niels Bohr. He took what, what Rutherford learned and tried to put that into a mechanical system. And he began to realize that if there were going to be positive and negative particles inside an atom like that, they couldn't just be stationary. Because if a negative particle would be sitting here and a positive particle would be sitting here, they would simply attract each other almost instantly and become, become one. So in order for a negative particle to be able to stay away from a positive particle, just like the Earth can stay away from the Sun because it goes around the Sun, if the Earth were to be stopped, the Sun would pull it right in and we would disappear into the Sun. Well, the same with these negative charges, they must be moving around the positive charge at very high speeds in order to be able to stay in the structure like that. So Niels Bohr calculated that and he kind of said the Coulomb equation, the force between charged particles, which is defined by this equation, and the centripetal equation or the centrifugal equation, he set those two equations equal and from that he was able to figure out the size of an atom, the size of the radius of a hydrogen atom, and so he knew that the radius was 0 0.053 nanometers, or 0 0.53 angstroms, what they used back in the days. Also, he figured out that the number of times that an electron had to go around the nucleus 
of a hydrogen atom had to be in the thousands of trillions of times for them to stay away from each other. So some amazing discoveries were made, realizing that the electron had to go around the nucleus extremely fast at very high speeds, many trillions of times per second for the atom to exist like that. So he surmised then that the nucleus, and based upon what others had discovered, had to be made up of positive charge, but the mass of the nucleus, which was the overwhelming mass of the overall atom, had to be made of not just positive particles, but also neutral particles. So the concept came in that an atom was made up of positive particles called protons, neutral particles called neutrons, and electrons, the negative particles called electrons, knowing that these were the heavy particles making up the nucleus and had most of the mass of the atom, and these were the negative charges with a very little bit of mass who would zip around the nucleus at very high speeds. For his discoveries, Bohr, who came up with the atomic model, the Bohr model of the atom, in 1913 received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922. Both of them well deserving of these prizes for these amazing discoveries. So all of a sudden, matter was no longer just made up of atoms, but it was actually made up of subatomic particles, subatoms, smaller than atoms. And so atoms had a specific structure on it, and then they began to realize that the nucleus would depend upon how many protons and neutrons were in there, and then, the com then of course, to compensate for the charge, an equal number of electrons as protons would have to be in the atom as well. So our understanding of nuclear matter and small particles began to explode at this point. Many more people began to research this, and it's amazing what they found in the years to come. So if you're interested still, stay tuned and see what happens on video number three.